You're about to meet two people who know all about life with diaphragm pacers, a terrific young man who's making the most of his life and his very proud mother. Jimmy was found to be 24-hour dependent, ventilator dependent early on. I have a tracheotomy on my neck that is used at night with my ventilator that I use to keep me breathing at night. And on my back, I have a pacemaker that triggers my phrenic nerve to help me breathe during the day. Well, Alex was um, 20 months old when Jimmy was born. And obviously, it was a pretty big shock, and there was a lot of drama going on. But we had a very little one that needed a lot of attention. So right out of the gate, it was going to be a team. And both our kids were going to have attention. I have an older sister. And my family always treated me with exactly the same discipline, exactly the same rules, and exactly the same expectations as my older sister. And that is a real quick way to put me in the mindset that I am exactly the same as everybody else. If he was going to do and be all that he could be, he needed to have the attitude and the restrictions and the motivations that our daughter did or any other child he was going to be around. So. We tried to say, okay, what would what we do if we didn't have this situation in front of us? What would he be doing? And that's how we gauged our decisions. This is a team, and we've approached this th whole thing as a team. I have my part of the of the the efforts. My husband has his. He's a phenomenal researcher, finding Dr. Keynes and and Sheila and and all the things that they could do to help us. The pacing system. Uh, my husband sent me to New York to, to see a child with CCHS before Jimmy was a year old so I could get a sense of what was going on. Um, he was, he's always been there looking for ways we can better Jimmy's life. And I'm mom and I make sure all the, the home stuff's going right and Jimmy's got all his needs and everything's scheduled. Well, my mom is actually Wonder Woman on that regard. She brings in uh, two inches worth of paperwork to any doctor doctor's appointment, she's got more numbers than the doctor does. She's great about that. And I try and pay attention to her as much as possible so that I can take over in her footsteps. Whenever I go to a doctor's appointment, I try and ask as many questions as I can, bring up anything that's bothering me, and try and get them answered to me. But it is good to have help with your parents, but you always want to put yourself in that area as much as you can. It's all a team, and Jimmy needs to just do the best he can and be the happiest kid he can. I went into school having already experienced six years of life of being treated exactly the same as my sister. So I went into school thinking, okay, I, there's nothing different about me. My teachers are going to expect just as much of me as are my friends. So that was a good starting point. Well, we always knew the teacher he would have the next year. We'd meet in the summer before school would start. I'd give whoever in the school and very often more of the teachers and principals and people that were going to be involved and knew of Jimmy wanted to be included because they wanted to be ready and helpful if they could. We do a little class ABC's on Jimmy and safety things. When I was younger my mom would actually come in on the first or second day of school and make a little speech to the class about me and obviously talked privately with the teacher and that had wonderful effects that I didn't even know at the time because I was so young. The nurse came with him but she always acted as if she was an assistant in the class. Jimmy didn't have a nurse, it was the teacher's assistant in view of everyone else and he just took to it. It came to me I'm sure in elementary school when I realized I have just as many friends as anybody else did. And if I was so different as people might think I am, that wouldn't be true. And I really do have a bunch of friends and I am treated by those people just like they treat everybody else. His motto when he went to college, driving over to San Diego, getting him unpacked and putting his things in his dorm as he said, I'm gonna meet a new person every day. And he'd come home and he'd say, I met a new person today. And it was just, it was an adventure. It was exciting for him. He loves people, he loves trying new things, he's hiking now, he, he can't wait to just hike any rock he sees. He doesn't hang up his clothes, he doesn't put his shoes away, he doesn't, it wastes time that he could be out enjoying life. That's just Jimmy. The chain of events of how people treat you starts with how you view yourself. 
By that I mean don't avoid anything. That don't use your situation as a handicap. That's one of the best things I came up with. Even when you are in PE and you don't want to do the running laps, but you think really you could walk or you could do something, always do that. Always try and be as close to normal as you can. Otherwise people will look at you differently and you don't want to promote your difference any more than you have to. He, he just wants to be out there. He wants to live every moment. I love playing basketball. I go out. This past month, I think I've been out every day, at least once a day. And I love being near the beach. I love skimboarding. I don't know how many people know what skimboarding is, but it's a blast. He, he, he just doesn't get upset. The only time he gets upset is when he thinks he's disappointed us. And he has, he has never, ever in his entire life disappointed me. He, I am just so inspired, sorry, I'm so inspired by him. I get frustrated, hang up your clothes, put your shoes away, but we, we um, celebrate the fact that there are always normal things that we get nuts about. It's not, not his achievements and or the person he is. He is just a remarkable young man. Jimmy, um, right before Mother's Day, came home and he says, I have a Mother's Day present for you. And he was kind of grinning and he handed me this plaque and Jimmy received the highest grade point average in the sophomore class at the University of San Diego this year as a freshman. And he had previous credits that transferred when he was a freshman and he's been a straight-A student but this was quite quite the gift on Mother's Day to be uh, surprised with some achievement like this but like all of his achievements we've been so so proud of him and uh, this is just another example that he really can do anything that he sets his mind to. You always want to be active. You always want to find new things to do, find new ways that you can improve on yourself and push the limits, essentially, but not in any dangerous way, of course. But don't just accept what you have and accept what you can and can't do, because there's always more things you can do. If I, if I only did the things I thought I was able to do in middle school, I would never have made it to college. I never would have made it this far. I always tried to find new creative ways of working with my medical situation and find new ways to expand my horizons. And that allowed me to expand my life, essentially. What a family. As we wrap up this DVD, a few more words of encouragement in our final chapter.